Hi, my name is Barry Crampton. Today I'm going to show you around our Range Rover Evoque, then I'll take you for riding it, but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Um, this car's come off one of our very best uh, customers. He's uh, a perfectionist, um, keeps them absolutely mint all the time, so uh, hand on heart, I can, I can tell you this is a good one. It's a two litre TD4 autobiography. It's automatic, four wheel drive, 2016 on a 16 plate, 52,401 miles at the moment, two registered owners, fuel economy, urban is 39.2 miles per gallon, extra urban is 53.3 miles per gallon, and combined is 55.3 miles per gallon. Has a 0 to 60 time of eight seconds, a top speed of 121 miles per hour, out of a four cylinder, 178 brake horsepower, 16 valve engine. So we've got the uh, autobiography badges on the side here, this little kind of uh, aluminium inset, the Range Rover vents on the, on the top of the, the bonnet. Front parking sensors, this has also got 360 cameras, so uh, cameras all round, there's, uh, there's one just there. The others are uh, over here in the mirror. Got the LED running lights at the front there. These wing protectors there. These are probably the nicest wheels I've seen on a Range Rover, to be honest. They, they, they're kind of multi-Y spokes. Pirelli Scorpions all round, mud flaps, power folding door mirrors, got the full pan roof, de-chromed, it's uh, black all around the windows, piano black, it's keyless lock, keyless entry, if I just come back to it, put my hand behind the, the handle, it, it'll open up, it's keyless go as well, rear privacy glass, the integrated rear tailgate spoiler with the twin shark fin aerials. It's a reversing camera there and also power open, power close tailgate. Nice flat load area, a reasonable size. Hard rear load cover, split 60-40 rear seats. This one's got this uh, lovely finish of a kind of a, a brush stainless. Uh, trim over the bumper with Evoke uh, stamped in it. Twin chrome exhaust tips under there and this piano black diffuser and a bit of piano black in there with the, with the rear parking sensors in. Um, you, you've got to knock the headrests up, as usual, when you're, uh, if you're an adult and you're sitting in, in the back, otherwise they stick right, right in the middle of your shoulders. Um, lovely environment. As I say, this car, the guy that owns it, he's, uh, he's a fanatic. So it's, it's absolutely meant. And, uh, and I noticed before when I, when I was looking around it, if, uh, if you just put this, this one up, it's still under here. Got the pamphlet on how to look after the leather. So uh, that's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, I, I love cars like this. And uh, to be fair, I love the Evoke. It's it's really nice. It's uh, the the colour combination quite subtle, but lovely. This perforated leather, and you've you've got the contrast stitching too. The outside seats are heated. It's got the Meridian sound system, which is brilliant, uh, fantastic sound. So if you enjoy music, it, it's just a lovely car to drive and a uh, lovely car to be a passenger in. Unless of course you've got somebody who likes rap music or something like that. The Isofix rear child anchor points there. Rear armrest. It's got over mats on it, carpet's like brand new, lovely car. Okay, I'll just take you for a ride in it. The 
the Range Rover keys there. We do have two of them, but uh, they're uh, surplus to requirements because foot on the brake. Took the start button and, and that's it off. First thing to do today, again, heated steering wheel and the heated seats. Um, I've got to say, I don't, I don't really like this configuration of the, the heated seats because you, you press the button, press the button like so, and then you have to mess about uh, clicking the, the touch screen. Having said that, this, these are also heated, the heated and cooled seats. So if you knock that down like, like that, it, then you get cold air blowing through the perforations. Let's see. Just knock that down because it do get red hot. Uh, great specification. I, I forgot to mention in the walk round, it'll park itself as well. And if I if I manage to do it without draining all the batteries, I'll I'll, uh, I'll see if I can whip down to Waitrose car park and, and just show you. Okay, so I'll just show you how to uh, use the uh, park assist here or the automatic parking. So first of all, we'll we'll put it in drive, and then we go over here, click that switch. On the dashboard there, you'll see parallel parking, searching. Well, I don't want parallel parking, I want perpendicular. So I'll just indicate left to tell it where we're going. And then it says, we're moving forward. It's found a space. I'm gonna go past that space actually. Space found, select R and wait, R, perpendicular parking, reverse with care. So we're going in. Stop, select drive and wait. So drive, there we go. It's taking me out. And the screen steering wheel moves I'm just covering the brake you can see there it's uh, taking me in stop select drive making a meal of it select reverse and there we go. We're going in there. Park assist finished. Absolutely perfect. Spot on. Um, so, so you've got TV here. It w there won't be a signal up here, no doubt. Oh, actually there is. Oh, Ferrari. What are we on? We're, we're Quest. Chasing Classic Cars, one of my favourite programmes. Wayne Carini. Right, okay, so that, that's, that's the TV. And if I, if I put this in drive now, let's just, just say I'll put it in drive. Right, so th <laughs> this is my view here. And the passenger can watch Chasing Classic Cars. I can watch the sat nav. So it that's a brilliant idea. Let's just I did set the electric memory seats here. That's really getting annoying. So we've got electric seats, electric mem three position electric memory seats. Meridian speakers brilliant um, I bet we've got no hey Siri I, in fact no I'll, I'll just I'll just turn this up Don't you feel like Don't you... yep all the time <laughs> in the car job that should be our theme tune so really I'm still not comfortable really really nice vehicle 360 cameras. If I click the cameras there. There you go. So 
that's the uh, that's the front view. If I click it, here. well, you see up there. Look. I was just, sorry, I was just trying to. <laughs> I was just trying to show you, demonstrate there. This has got lane departure assist, and it was will actually, if if you if you've not got the sense to switch it off, it will actually steer you back into the lane or try and steer you back into the lane. But it does give you this awful. To me, it gives you an awful feeling like one of your tyres is going down if you just get to close to one of the lines it starts to pull you back um, I, and honestly it's it's I think it's the most horrific feeling especially if there's nothing behind you and you're overtaking some something or whatever and you you don't indicate and just pull out and go across it, it, it'll try and pull you back and, it, and you, you can feel it it's like fighting against you and then it gives way and then you you shoot over the road so if you want it it's there and if not you can knock it off I think you can also change the sensitivity as well it's got traffic signal recognition as well so um, you can set that to it flashes when you go over the speed limit or you can set it to flash when you've gone five kilometers or 10 kilometers over the speed limit if you if you're a bit flexible with the law you've got paddle shift on the top here Let's say the, the most important switch there the heated steering wheel which is just there at the side of your telephone buttons Cruise control on the right hand side here. Just click it one touch and it's set. That, that's why I, I can't understand. Range Rover are usually so, everything's so easy to use and it's one touch that you can do with gloves on. And um, I'm disappointed with that. And it, the other thing I'm disappointed with it at the moment is. Uh, gesture control to open the tailgate. The idea is you come back to your, your car, you've got your key on you, you've got loaded load of shopping, so you just wave your foot under the corner of the bumper and the tailgate comes up. Um, I'm assuming they, they did it under the side right, so that it do not flip up and hit you. But every time I walk past mine, bearing in mind I park at the side of the office, so every time I go out and walk past it, the tailgate shoots up. It's, it, it really is driving me mad. It's such a, you know, such a stupid idea. Heated seats getting a bit warm now. See what I mean? When, when the camera's on, you, you can't change your heated seat. And we'll try it again. Click that and then, or knock it, knock it off. That's it. Here, it's, it's the dynamic. I'll, I'll put my, uh, I'll put my Ray-Bans on for this when we're in a place where nobody's going to run into me with a piece of farming or agricultural equipment. Right, we'll just pull over here. Because at the moment, there we go, turn them on. Just at the side there, you'll see an orange light. That's the blind spot warning uh, indicator, which is, a, which is a very, very good idea. On the way up, on the way up the motorway, it was it was flashing on all the time, and you do or you can lose sight. Um, the Evoque hasn't got a massive back window. Once you get used to it, it's it's no problem at all, nothing to worry about. And you only notice it when you're at the back opening the tailgate. When you're in the car, it, it's all right. 
you, you've got a good view. The mirrors are nice and big as well. We've got power folding door mirrors. Uh, but the the D pillar at the back there, that's you know, that's that's fairly wide. So um, I suppose it is. I, I mean, I, I I've got a tremendous view here. I, I can't complain at all. But I've still been a, a or having ridden motorbikes in the past. Um, I think that's probably the best idea ever. You just lose sight of a cyclist for a second, or, or you don't see him, and you pull out, and then the next minute is, you know, very very bad accident, which is no good for anybody. So uh, see the the cloud today, very low cloud. It's uh, seeing as the forecast was rain, we we've, we've done we've done all right. Okay, now I'll, I'll just I'll just actually I'll change that back because it says at the moment a special program now it's saying general program selected so when we get around this bend when we get around here if I just click that we'll see the dashboard's gone red and then it's uh, it's in dynamic mode bit more responsive using more fuel which we don't want to do so we'll knock that off straight away now one of my cameras has gone off we've only been going five minutes it, it, it seems to do this to remind me of how naff electric cars will be when they start going wrong that camera six months old GoPro just keeps going off as and when it feels like it. I don't know why it just does it on it on its own for no reason. That is that is actually my newest camera. It's not not red hot or anything. We'll try again. You know, I've got to say, in, in my opinion, you can't go wrong with a, a diesel engine and a, an internal combustion engine. In the news recently, there's a, a shipload of Porsches and Lamborghinis and so on. One of them's got a faulty battery, a hybrid battery. It's set on fire. 438 million pounds worth of cars and the ship totaled because one battery has uh, has gone wrong in a car once they start burning you can't put them out you've just got to wait for it to to, to burn out so um, you know I understand I, I the attraction of electric cars but electric going up now from I mean all, all fuels going up but if electric goes up too much or, or we, we can't get any then uh, your car's going to be stuck up the driveway at least with diesels you can you can virtually run them off chip fat and uh, the, as long as as long as you're in the UK there'll never be a shortage of chip fat that's for sure right back to the car it's got the wooden insets in the in the dash brushed aluminium around the gear tunnel around all the, the switches got sat nav bluetooth hands-free bluetooth audio streaming the dash left hand side speedo the center your information display the right hand side is rev counter in your information display you've got your fuel gauge coolant temperature gauge traffic signal recognition digital speedo bottom right tells you how much fuel you've got left before you need to fill up and then in the center you've got your trip computer too now from there from this switch on the right click OK you've got driver assistance trip computer display settings vehicle information 
again driver assistance click on driver assistance and there you've got forward alert lane keep assist which I want to knock that off uh, that, that is a terrible <laughs> it's, it's, it's the devil's invention reverse traffic detection electric window switches here <clears throat> you've got your climate control heated front screen heated rear screen and in the Range Rovers with a heated front screen some cars you click the heated front screen or that what you think's the the quick clear for the front screen and it just puts the blower on full and, and blows on the screen this it's got heating elements in the front screen like your, your rear screen gets rid of the, the, the ice on your screen or any condensation and uh, it's just my, my favourite four wheel drive of this size I was in an Audi the other day, the Audis have come on quite a lot was it Q5 I think it was and, and lovely to drive but Range Rover, Land Rover um, they just seem to have it for me seem to have it absolutely perfect And certainly, as far as off-roading goes, I don't think there's anything to anything to beat. Here we go. We'll just pull over, put the hill descent on. And there's a, a green symbol comes up there. Let my foot off the brake there. It's just allowing me to go downhill. And let's see if this works. If I on on the centre there, you'll you'll just see. Can you see that green arrow going up? There you go. I can actually. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna let this car go by. So you can actually control your speed downhill. And it, again, I, I've got to say, I didn't know that, <laughs> and I wouldn't know it because I never read handbooks. I just knock that off. So we'll go down the hill normally and thanks to one of the subscribers um, who told me how to do that and that <clears throat> as I said before I'm really grateful if I miss something or there's something I don't know it, it's great to have 23,000 followers who, who pull you up on everything you do wrong so uh, I don't mind that if, if there's anything you've you think I've forgotten or other drivers should know um, a little tip then please leave it in the comments because it, it does help I've only got a small brain so I can't remember everything and the, and the stuff I do remember is, is pretty useless <laughs> to most people we've got uh, front central armrest here that that pulls up we've got sheep on the road in here in there look you've got two USBs you've got auxiliary in a power socket let's give these sheep a chance to wander across <laughs> that must be a sheep crossing there So just where this sort of vehicle belongs.
I went uh, yes, yesterday. I decided I wanted a new uh, Apple Watch, and of course I can't. I can't wait for anything. Um, so I jumped in my Range Rover Sport, and I'm not kidding. It was lashing down. The, the motorways were flooded, and uh, nobody in the right mind would have gone out. To be fair, if they didn't have to, if they weren't going to work or something like that, you just wouldn't have gone out. But again, in the in the Range Rover, up the motorway, you could hardly see a thing. The cars at the side of me and anybody else who wanted in a Range Rover was right in the spray. It was it was quite bad for me, but being sat up further, you're above the spray. It makes such a difference. You know, a couple of seconds where you can see what's going on in front of the car in front because you're sat in an elevated position. It, uh, it can really, it can be a lifesaver. Especially if you're if you're up here and you need to go to the shops. <laughs> and that's that. The temperature there was set at 19 degrees. It's blowing cold air on my feet. Switch the camera on here. There you go, just look at that beautiful place. Those are the side cameras which I was trying to show you before, but uh, and then it's a bit dark today. Don't quite know why. No, possibly. That's um, that. I'll click the arrow. Curve view. There you go. There's a curve view. T junction view. Plan view, like drone view, you can see there. That's the cameras all around, so you can see where you're going in, basically into a space. Rear junction view. Water, water splash view. So I've not grown up. <laughs> I've got to say the, the previous owner of this car, if he watches this video, he'll come around and punch me for doing that. He's got the cleanest cars ever. Cleanest motorbikes. That's it. Beautiful car, great specification. Autobiography is just just finished that little bit better. Very subtle. You know, nothing nothing in your face. No, no like these overfinch and and Khan conversions where these. You, you, you when the Range Rover engineer and the designer is finished, that's it. You don't need to do anything else. And, uh, don't stick anything else on. 
because it's perfection. <laughs> no, no, no big, no big arches and stuff like that. The car's subtle and it's perfect for absolutely anything you will ever need to do. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.